What's up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilli, Gizik, and Milligan, and Villa, and again, and we are back on Tsukihime, um, whatever this shit was called. We are on day two in version Impulse 2, October 22nd. Last episode, okay, last episode, we, we went to, uh, we went to, we went back home to our sister, and we watched TV with Koaku, I think that's her name, and we saw a black ass crow or a blue ass crow and then we saw a fucking werewolf and shit and then uh uh what the fuck happened oh my goodness a lot of shit now our, our glasses don't work anymore yes that was the main event our glasses don't work no more since they told me my eyes could see the point where things could easily be broken and if that thing were to be a person, then what I would see would be their vital spots. Lines which, if cut, could break apart something without any effort. With those lines, even things as hard as steel could be easily cut. In other words, everything in existence has its destiny of breaking internalized within it. This is something in inescapable for anything with a physical form, Shiki. That's what Sensei had said. I was still a child back then. I remember finally understanding what she meant in getting scared. In other words, the world is filled with is full of cracks, and they could collapse at any instant. If there are scribbles all over the ground, there's a possibility that that earth would start breaking apart if I walk over it. When I realized what she meant, I thanked Sensei from the bottom of my heart for the glasses she gave me. I couldn't have gone on living if I had continued to see the lines all the time. The points where things could be easily broken. There isn't a single advantage to me being able to see them. Good morning. I hear an unfamiliar voice. It is morning. It is time for you to awaken, Shiki. Stop calling me Shiki already. Stop calling me Shiki Sam already. That's uh the other bitch. Not bitch. I told you yesterday, it sends chills down my back. I wake up. Hisui stands far from the bed like a statue. Where am I? Good morning, Shiki-sama. The girl in a maid uniform bows. Ah, yeah, I came home, right, okay. I push myself up, looking around the room. In that instant, I feel a sharp pain in my temples. Uh-huh. Are you looking for your glasses? Hisui gently hands me my glasses. Oh, I let out a breath. Last night before I went to sleep, I had the feeling I was seeing lines even with my glasses on. Seems like it was just my imagination, thank god. Maybe it's because I slept in an unfamiliar room but my mind is hazy. Shiki sama He's who he calls out to me. Shaking my head, I shake away my sleepiness. Good morning, Hisui. Thanks for coming to wake me. There's no need there's no need to thank me. It is my duty to come and wake you, Shiki-sama. Hisui gives a plain and completely expressionless response. Even in an unfavorable light, I think Hisui's futures are, features are beautiful. It should be wonderful for a girl to wake me up every morning, but as Hisui never smiles, I don't feel that happy about it. What a shame. If Hisui only knew half a ko- If only- If he Fuck! If Hisui only had half of Kohaku's brightness, she would, re she would be really cute. Do you need something? Realizing I'm looking at her, Hisui stares right back at me. No, nothing at all. Waking up with you there makes me feel like I'm really at the tunnel mansion. Now then. Getting off the bed, I stretch out both arms. Suddenly, I realize I'm wearing pajamas. Uh, hold on. I I'm sure yesterday I... Huh? I thought I slept in my uniform last night. Yes, since it is bad for your health to do so, Nason changed your clothes and put you to bed afterward. Hisui explains as if it's something perfectly natural. No, the fuck it is not. I see. She changed my clothes. It's true that I could have caught a cold if I had just slept like that. Just the kind of attentive service you'd expect from a man. Hey, wait a second! I quickly check my pants and underwear. My pants are brand new pajama pants. Even my underwear is new. Oh no, nah, she saw my dick! Whoa, 
Ah, what the hell did what, I, I wanted to say? What the hell did you do? But somehow the words are stuck in my throat. I've got to calm down and think things over for now. Let's see. First of all, half the blame belongs to me. And the one who chased me wasn't Hisui. It was her sister, Kohaku. It would be wrong to complain to Hisui. Hisui. Yes, what is it? You don't have anything uncalled for. You don't have to do anything uncalled for like this from now on. If, if you have to, please wake me up. I can change myself, so I'd like to do so. My face is deep red as I say all this. Hisui obediently nods in affirmation. Your uniform is folded and awaits you over there. Please come to the sitting room after you have changed. Damn it. How careless could I be? She saw my dick. No! It was careless of me to begin with when I fell asleep on the bed like that. But to have not woken up while I was being changed is over the top. Usually I would have sensed it, but maybe I was just really tired. Complaining to myself isn't going to change anything. I can't just keep standing here talking to myself like a dumbass. I better hurry up and change and go have breakfast. My school uniform is neatly folded and my shirt is even ironed. Passing my wrist through the sleeves feel good. It's that fresh, brand new feeling. No, there's nothing wrong with being naked, is there? Yeah, nothing wrong with it. But I couldn't help being embarrassed at the fact that I was being changed by the warmly smiling Kohaku-san. To top things off, the face in the mirror keeps smiling from time to time despite being bright red. Are you really okay, Tano Shiki? I thought you were supposed to be uneasy about staying here, you fucking amateur. He done folded the second a girl got it. <laughs> the second a girl saw his dick, he folded. He was like, damn, maybe it ain't that bad here. I got bad bitches looking at my dick and shit. <laughs> Shut your ass up, Zeke. Akiha and Kohaku are relaxed in the sitting room. Akiha is wearing the uniform of the Asa, 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 Asa ladies, uh, at, ladies, a, a famous school for young girls. They're drinking tea together gracefully, as if breakfast ended a long time ago. Greet them both. The fuck? Why you can you can say hello to both? Good morning, you two. Good morning, Shiki-san. Wearing the white apron that suits her. Kohaku replies with a smile that could not possibly be any larger. On the other hand, Akiya just casts a glance at me. Good morning. You certainly took your time this morning, Nissan. She certainly knows how to put a damper on things. Fucking bitch. Took my time. It's barely past seven. It only takes 30 minutes to get to school from here, so I'm actually up early. Dipshit. So you're saying you're gonna finish breakfast in just 10 minutes? You're not some starving dog, so if you're going to eat breakfast, I'd like you to take your time. Akiha's words really do have thorns. I'm not a dog, Akiha. Then I remember. Speaking of dogs, there is what happened last night. Hey, about what happened last night, does that happen every night? What? Akiha tilts her head slightly in response to my question. It seems the point of my question has completely failed to reach her. Talking about what happened last night. That noisy woof, 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 racket. Even you wouldn't have been able to sleep with all that going on, right? Nissan, the fuck are you going on about? What? Talking about last night, of course. Around 11 at night, some stray dogs were barking their heads off. Akiha and Kohaku exchanged looks, and then together they both looked back at me. It's like they think of some kind of nutcase. I can't just let this slip by. Fine, I'm not gonna ask, I'm not fucking asking you anymore, Akiha! Fucking asshole. Kohaku, it was really noisy last night, wasn't it? Uh, was it really? I, I did think the wind was quite strong, but the only unusual thing I found looking around late at night was you sleeping in your uniform on top of your bed. Ah, uh, yes. I'll be more careful from now on. What? What happened, Kohaku? Oh, nothing in particular. She just has bad sleeping posture, that's all. Kohaku dodges Akiha's question with a smile. Come to think of it, Kohaku is calling me Shiki-san now. It seems that he still passed my message from last night. Are you sure neither of you noticed? Those dogs were barking for about 30 minutes straight last night. <laughs> if that isn't noisy, I don't know what the fuck is. It really was a wolf-wolf panic, wasn't it? Somehow I get the feeling Kohaku missed the point. 
Well, that's basically how it was. I don't remember anything like that. If you don't either, do you, Kohaku? No, I don't. Sorry, Shiki. There wasn't anything particular, particularly like last night that I can remember. Then it's decided. The only possibility left I can think of is that Nissan had a dream about it. Uh, well, now that she mentions it, maybe it was a dream, but... You must have had a nightmare because you weren't used to the mansion yet. Oh, I know what. If that stray dog barks again tonight, perhaps we shall, perhaps we shall start keeping an extra vicious guard dog here. A malicious giggle comes out of Akiha. I am now out of time, so please excuse me, Nissan. Please, do take care not to be attacked by any dogs on your way to school. I'ma beat the shit out of her. Akiha leaves the sitting room. Kohaka leaves to escort her to the doorway. Now seems like a good time to come to a conclusion. Given what's happened from last night up until now, it's a no-brainer to work out that for some reason, Akiha really, really hates me. I leave for the lobby after I eat breakfast Kohaku made for me. Hisui's in the lobby waiting with my bag. Will there be enough time, Shiki? Yeah, it's not even 20 minutes of school if I'm here if I run. It's 7.30 now, so I should be able to make it if I take the long way. I could make it even if I take the long way. Satisfied with my explanation, Hisui nods. Very well, I will escort you out. Uh, uh, yeah, thanks. It's terribly embarrassing to have a personal servant. Ah, uh, Shiki-san! Please wait! With pattering footsteps, Gohaku runs down from the second floor. Isui steps back and falls silent as Gohaku appears. Huh? Weren't you with Akiha? Lady Akiha goes to school by car. Since I had something to give you this morning, I stayed behind. Something to give me? Yes. This came from the Arima family yesterday. Gohaku smiles. I have all my luggage already. The things I used while I was at the RM has all belonged to them, so all I've got are my own clothes. Really? But this was sent here nonetheless. Gohaku hands me a thin wooden box, perhaps 20 centimeters long? It's not heavy at all. Kohaku, I've never seen this before. Well, apparently it was left to you by your departed father. It was to be given to you in the will. By my old man? I can't really feel anything about that. What's the old man who expelled me from this mansion eight years ago doing leaving me shit? Oh well. Gohaku, please take it to my room for me. Gohaku's staring intently at the wooden box. She seems almost like a child who wants a toy. Stare. No, she is a child. I, I get it. You want to know what's inside, right? Oh, not at all. I merely wondered for a moment. Like I said, you do wonder what's inside. All right. Let's open it. Sin no! Hold on. With a dry sound, the wooden box opens. Inside is a 10 centimeter bar of thin iron. It's an iron bar. Undecorated and worn, has finger marks all over it. The old man must have really hated me to leave a piece of junk like this. No, Shiki. It's a fruit knife. Gaku takes the iron bar out of the box. See, isn't it one of those folding knives? One, two, three. With the pachink, a 10 centimeter blade pops out from the bar. I see. It certainly is a knife. It's old, but it seems pretty solid. The year and era was made and it's written on the back. Gohaku replaces the blade and hands over the knife. Certainly there's a number written on the grip. The character 7 and under it, the character 9. Hey son, there is no error by that name. It just says Nanatsu Yoru. Surprised, I turn around. Hisui, who had been silent until now, was looking at the knife over my shoulder. Y you surprised me, Hisui. You should say something. You don't have to look over my shoulder like that, you know? If you want to see it, I'll show it to you. Isui's cheeks suddenly become a little redder. Oh, hold on. P please excuse me. Uh, that, that knife is so beautiful that I cannot help myself. Beautiful? You really think it's beautiful? It looks kind of beat up to me. Not at all. The tempering of the blade is masterful. I think it's a knife with its own proper history. 
Really? Looks to me like a piece of junk. But since he seems so convinced, I begin to feel the same thing. Hmm. In its own way, I guess it's not such a bad inheritance. Seven Knights? Maybe that's the name of this fruit knife. Maybe, though. I can't imagine him naming a knife like that. Whatever the case may be, it's obvious that it's an antique. Well, in any case, I believe, it's t I believe in taking what's given to me. I replaced the blade and put the knife in my trouser pocket. Shiki, do you have, you no have you enough time? Ah, I have to get going. Well, Kohaku, thanks for the delivery. You're welcome. Kohaku smiles and waves. So he knows we have this power. He probably wants us to use that knife to cut shit. Leaving the doorway, I pass through the garden. As I pass out the mansion gates, I sense a commotion. What's going on? I feel like something's happening on the right side of the mansion. I heard that someone found bloodstains on the road east of the mansion. Bloodstains? You mean leftover blood? Yes. There was blood on the mansion fence, too. The police came to inquire about what happened last night while you were sleeping. Does that mean someone died? No, all that was found are bloodstains. The east side of the mansion. That's around where the man in black in the black coat was last night. Bloodstains, traces of blood. Bloodstains, traces of red. Come to think of it, I get the feeling I saw something red. Shiki-sama? No, it's nothing. Shaking my head, I shake off the bad images. Well, I'll be going now. Thanks for seeing me off, Hisui. Goodbye. Please take care of- Oh, fuck you! Goodbye, please take care on the way. Hisui bows deeply. I'm not sure what to take care about, but she probably is just worried about my health. Yeah, thanks. You take care too, Hisui. It's only right to repay good intentions with good intentions. With an energetic wave of the hand at Hisui, I leave the gates of the mansion behind. I walk along the unfamiliar streets. Up until now, I've been going to school from the Arima house, so it's the first time I've taken this route. It's, the only, it's only the path I'm taking that's different, but I feel like I'm going to a new school. There doesn't seem to be a lot of students from my school around. Apparently, there are not many who live around here. Half past seven in the morning. I can't see anyone running along the streets in the, in the school uniform except me. The business district is in a rush of activity. As usual, the scene is one of the su is one of suited firm employees gearing themselves for today's battle. No, it isn't quite the same as usual. For the last few days, the atmosphere has been a little heavier than this town. It's probably due to the serial killings. There are less people in the streets in the evenings now. You better cut down on hanging out at night, Arahiko. The face of my bad friend drifts into my mind. He'd be the sort to carry on hanging out at night, regardless of the atmosphere in town. Well, it's not like he's gonna listen to a word I say anyway. I start to see some people in school uniforms intermingled with the crowd. They're only about 10 minutes until the school gates close. I got to on your asphalt street so I won't be late. I arrive. Seems like it took 20 minutes rather than 30 from the mansion. I need to leave around 7 if I want to go slowly, since I ran several times on the way. The classroom, just minutes before homeroom, is full of commotion. Scattered all over the classroom are my classmates intent on talking until the teacher arrives. It's like a festival in here, even though there are only a few minutes left. I ease my way through I ease my way through to my seat to the wind next to the window. Then Yo! You're late, Tono. <laughs> this nigga. And stark contrast to the otherwise pleasant classroom. There is someone waiting with a big grin on his face. In addition, ah. Uh, good morning, Tono. It's SEAL! It's SEAL! I came back for you. I was gonna record P5 today, but I thought about it like, man, it's SEAL. It's SEAL. I gotta see my girl SEAL. I gotta see my girl SEAL. He's accompanied by someone very unexpected. Hey, senpai, why are you in our classroom? Dumbfound and I point the shield senpai like I'm looking at a ghost. Huh? Is this so unusual? I was just wondering if you were in class, so I decided to come over to see you, Tona. Unusual. The seniors never come to junior classes. There are all sorts of, of reasons, but the biggest one is that they're just too far apart. Oh, I see. Senpai nods with a serious face. 
You don't have to worry about that. Despite my appearance, I'm a fast runner. It takes me less than a minute to get to my class. Downstairs from here. Senpai emphasizes her point. I guess she's just not the kind of person who cares what other people think. Fucking W. Quit whining, Tono. What's wrong with it anyway? Senpai's here because she wants to be. Arahiko being Arahiko plocks himself on my desk and starts up a merry conversation with Senpai. I don't mind it, but you ought to get back to your class two minutes before homeroom starts, Senpai. I feel tired for some reason. Sighing, I sit down. Inui, it seems Tono is feeling down. Yeah, he's probably feeling irritable because he's not used to his life after moving. Tono doesn't mind most things, but he's got a bad habit of throwing a fit when faced with things he doesn't understand. Really? Tono doesn't look like the type to get angry. Nope, that's not true. Tono, you see, is usually pretty mature, but when he encounters something he doesn't understand, kaboom! Ah, kaboom, is it? Yep. You'll change your opinion once you see him losing. So you, you can't just trust him like that, senpai. The two of them whisper to each other. Hey, listen. If you're gonna talk properly, do you mind doing it in the hallway? I mean, privately, do you mind doing it in the hallway? I can hear every word you say when you do it on my fucking desk. So there's no real point to it. What? You can hear us? Arihigo gives an exaggerated reaction of surprises. No one can stay angry after being hit with a neck like that. Senpai puts her hands to her mouth and I can't tell how serious she is. If it's Senpai, she may have actually intended to talk privately. That's terrible, Tono. Listening on- That's terrible, Tono. Listening in on a lovely dovey private conversation between Senpai and me. You sure got some nasty hobbies. Arihiko points at me. Are you trying to pick a fucking fight with me, nigga? Actually, please do. Right now, I'm more than willing. Arihiko shakes his head. Of course not. You're my dear friend, right? I'd exchange fists with even my parents, but I have a policy of not fighting with my friends. I'm the very model of chivalry. That's amazing. I guess chivalrous people could punch their parents in the world, could punch their parents in the world that's inside his head. I see. That's a pretty rotten policy. Why is he doing the Mion laugh? Why is he doing the Mion Sanazaki laugh? Ha 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 ha! You pretended to be depressed, but deep down you're the same Tono as always. Damn, I had nothing to worry about after all. Arihiko hits me a couple of times in the back. Arihiko, were you worried about me just then? Don't ask me trivial stuff like that, dumb fuck. It's only good if I do it without you noticing. Arihiko hits me from the back some more. We've been friends for a long time, but I still can't get a hold on this guy's personality. So how's your new house? Pretty heavy and stressful by the looks of it. Uh-huh. Can't really say. I had a bad dream last night and the people at my house gave me the cold shoulder. I see. Sounds rough. Arihiko nods with a difficult expression. And Senpai is silent, staring at us while we have our trivial conversation. Looking as if she's about to beat the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> well, why do you keep making that face at me? I'm scared. Senpai? Tono, you really do get along well with Inui. Are you, are you, are you serious? You're dead ass. You must need thicker glasses if that's what you think after seeing what just happened. Not at all. You look really relaxed when you're with Inui. You're really open and trust him a lot. Senpai smiles happily for some reason. Arihiko and I exchange looks and tilts our head. Oh, I'm so envious. I really admire how your friendship allows such understanding without you getting worried over each other. Senpai's impressed. Really? Arihiko and I exchange looks and raise our eyebrows. That's right. It's just that you two don't realize it. Ah, but maybe it'll end if you do. In that case, it'd be best if you just to, you fuck. It'd be best if you two just remain how you are. Yeah, it's truly a miraculous balance. Well, I guess you can say our relationship is a miraculous fucking tightrope. Arihiko nods in agreement. I guess that's one point we perfectly agree on. Ah, it's almost time. I'll be going now. Oh, fuck. Ah, it's almost time. I'll be going now. 
Did you watch the news this morning, Tony? Nah, the house I moved to doesn't have a television, so I can't watch the morning news. Is that so? Well, I'll just ask you straight out then. There was a big mansion on, the t on today's morning news. Is that where you live? Huh? This morning news. Now that she mentions it, Hisui said the police came to talk. Yeah, that must be my house. I heard the police came this morning to ask us questions. Is that so? You mustn't be out playing at night, Tono. Senpai leaves quickly. I watch her silently and... Tono! What? I'm not listening anymore to your trivial garbage. It's not trivial. It's becoming a big problem. You've become so familiar with Senpai that she even comes here to see you. Arahiko stares at me gravely. Well, I don't know anything about it. Oh, well, I don't know anything about it. I've only started talking to her recently. Maybe she just came here on a whim today? And come to think of it, aren't you pretty familiar with her too? No way, man. It's taken me several, seven days to get her to remember my name. Oh, that's unusual. Wasn't it your policy not to deal with girls you can't pick up in a day because they're too much trouble? Nigga, button up your fucking shirt. Nobody want to see your hairless chicken fucking... Nobody wants to see your hairless chicken shit bird chest. That's for normal girls, but senpai is different. I've kept it a secret all this time, but actually I... You like seeing your girls who look good with glasses on, don't you? Ah! Arihiko's face turns red. You knew all along, my dear friend! Yeah, I knew. We're friends. We get along, we've got the same interests. I see, I see. You can understand how good Senpai is too, can't you? Hey, wait! Yeah, like I said, we've got similar interests, right? That's why we're into the same type of women. Arihiko nods in agreement and heads back to his own seat. I guess it was a short friendship, Tono. Yeah, exactly right. I wave Arahiko off. The teacher comes in at about the same time. Arahiko, you are not bagging seal. I am. I'm bagging seal. She belongs to me, nigga. Fuck you. The morning lessons are over. It's lunch break and Arahiko has gone on ahead to the cafeteria. Where should I have my lunch? Huh. Let's go to the tea ceremony room and see seal. Guess I'll go take a look in the tea ceremony room. I'm sure Senpai said something yesterday about after class about having lunch there. Senpai's there, maybe I can talk to her while having lunch. Most importantly, I enjoy having lunch with Senpai, but I'm also worried about the news story from this morning. All right, gotta strike while the iron's hot. I head out to the tea ceremony room before Arahiko notices my plan. I knock on the tea ceremony room door. After a brief wait, the door cracks open and Senpai pokes out her head. Huh? Tona? Puzzled Senpai tilts her head. She doesn't seem annoyed, but it seems like she really doesn't understand why I came here. Would you like to have lunch together, Senpai? Holding out the bread I purchased at the cafeteria, I tell her why I'm here. Lunch? I'm happy to hear you ask me that, but... Senpai thinks over it, looking troubled. Things don't look good. It seems Senpai isn't very interested. Guess I've got no choice. I decide to employ a little strategy. I have curry bread. Huh? Senpai's face becomes bright and cheerful. I had a feeling about this from yesterday's lunch, but I'm abused by your reaction. I'll give you this and thanks for yesterday's lunch, so why don't we eat it together? Yes, please. I I'll just put the tea on. Senpai hastily vanishes inside, following her into the tea ceremony room. Ah, as I enter, it's become obvious why Senpai was, Senpai was hesitating back then. On top of the tatami mat is an already empty lunchbox. This bitch eats fast. It seems like Senpai has long since finished eating her lunch. Tono, would you like green or English tea? Huh? Uh, green tea, please. More importantly, have you already finished lunch, Senpai? Yeah, it's just a little while ago. I slept in this morning, so I didn't have any breakfast and I was hungry all morning. It was terrible. I see. Well, you don't have to force yourself to accompany me. Sorry for intruding on you. I'll lead in the classroom, so please take your time relaxing. Huh? You mean you're not gonna give me any bread? I love you. 
No, I mean, you must be full, right? Not at all. I'm hungry. It doesn't appear she's saying it's just to make me feel better. She's saying it because she wants the bread. Really? Well, I'll be intruding, man. Is this really okay with you, senpai? The bread from my cafeteria really has volume, you know? No need to worry. If it's food I like, then I can eat limitless amounts of it. That bashful smile is most probably not from shyness, but from anticipation of the curry bread. She really is a woman of many mysteries. Someone who could be so happy over one curry bread in this day and age could be quite precious. I want her. Oh, that's hard! Senpai eats one while I have two, and we have tea afterwards. Kneeling on top of the mat, Senpai and I casually sip our tea. It would have been great if it wasn't during lunchtime at school, but that's life. How's your new house, Tono? It seems something terrible happened this morning. Huh, yeah. Well, the inside of the house is really fancy. There are these really noisy stray dogs at night. I guess it's also bad that there's no TV and no Japanese style room, so there's nowhere to drink tea like this. A stray dog? You mean what happened at your house wasn't related to those serial killings? I mean, I don't really know. There's this really high wall all around our mansion. They said they found blood stains there. But listen, that's where I saw a stray dog last night. I couldn't say it. Well, anyhow, it's got nothing to do with us. Let's stop talking about unpleasant topics now that we finally got an opportunity to relax. Not at all. We're residents of this town, so I think the killings do have something to do with us. Holding a cup in one hand, somebody casts a serious gaze toward me. Yeah, I guess that's true, but... You'll be okay if you don't go walking out in the streets at late at night, won't you? There's been eight people killed so far already, right? That many victims, the police ought to catch the guy any day now. Jeez, Shiki. You don't have any sense of danger, do you? The newscast has been saying the same thing since the third victim was found, but they haven't caught him yet, have they? Well, that's true. It's just that I can't really relate to it when they give such a stupid caption like the The Modern Day Vampire. I'm sorry, I really did take it too lightly. We live in this town, so we've got to be careful, right? Yes. I'm really glad you understand. Senpai smiles in a satisfied manner. Senpai, why are they calling him a vampire anyway? Well, the blood was all drained from the bodies, right? Isn't that kind of like a vampire? You really think so? Isn't it said that you can become a vampire yourself once? A vampire sucks your blood? These victims are all dead with the corpses to prove it. They don't really have to go around calling him a vampire. Senpai laughs and nods. Do you really believe in things like vampires, Tono? Hey now, I'm just saying that's how the news is presenting it. If there really were vampires, there wouldn't be any dead bodies left, just like I said earlier. Yes, you're right. But can't you think of it like this? The people who are found dead, the people who are dead, fuck. The people who were found dead died because they couldn't become vampires. There are actually people who can and can't become vampires. And those who can become vampires wouldn't show up as dead after being attacked by one. Because they're still alive somewhere. That's what you'd call a horror story, senpai. Yes, exactly. I'm sorry to say there's no punchline. Laughing, senpai sips from a cup. Are you the vampire, bitch? Are you the vampire? You know an awful lot about this. While we, were having a ran while we were having a rambling conversation, lunchtime ends. Fifth period. Feeling sleepy on my classics lecture, I my gaze drifts outside the window and a crow is perched on the classroom veranda. Not the blue crow from last night, but just an ordinary black one. With his black eyes, the crow stares inside the classroom through the glass window. It's true that it's unusual for a bird to perch there, but it's not like it's some major event. Ah. Suddenly it comes at me. My vision gradually goes white as my sense of balance goes crazy. I always got hit and getting hit with that anemia. My field of vision sways. It feels like something is building in the back of my head and my brain feels heavy. Crap. I know this feeling. It's the precursor to an anemia attack. The blood has been building up inside my blood vessels and brain forms black clots and slushes around inside my head, causing my vision to go black. If I had to describe it, I would say it feels like darkness is pushing from my brain toward my eyes. 
This is bad. I don't usually collapse in the middle of class, but fumbling in a world of darkness, I blindly use my desk for support. Even that becomes useless. I can't put any strength in my fingers. All I can do now is fall toward the floor. Uh, excuse me, sensei. And something hits me roughly on the back. Tano's looking pretty bad, so I let it take him to the infirmary. Arahiko. At some point, Arahiko had come up to me. Are you really feeling? Are you really feeling bad, Tano? I can hear the teacher's voice from his lectern. No, I think I'll be fine. Man, he's totally out of it. Wouldn't it be better for him to leave early? Arahiko makes his outrageous proclamation loudly. I see. If you say so, Inui, then there's no mistake about it. I've already heard about Tono's help from Kunafuji sensei. Tono, if you're not feeling well, you may go rest in the infirmary or leave early. Sheesh. I don't know what's with him. It seems the classics teacher has complete trust in what Arahiko says. Come on, you can go now. Your face is pale and all, but no one's gonna know you're feeling bad until you tell them, you know? Arahiko hits me on the back grumpily. I'll be leaving early then, Sensei. The classics teacher nods solemnly. Sorry about making you worry, Arahiko. Don't worry about it. We've been inseparable since middle school. I can tell when you're about to collapse from anemia. Arahiko heads towards his own seat, expressing my thanks with a look I drag my leaden body out of the class. I rock with Arahiko, man. He a real nigga. I leave school. It would have been better to go lie down in the infirmary, but at this hour, it'd be after school by the time I wake up. That being the case, I decide that I better go lie down back at the mansion, even if it means pushing myself. I think I'm feeling a little better. I breathe in the outside air and feel a little rejuvenated. Shish! I'm surprised at my own body. Eight years ago, the price of recovering from that near fatal injury was becoming more becoming prone to summon a summon a sun, fuck becoming prone to sudden anemia. When I first left the hospital, it would happen at least once a day. Collapsing from Disney has became a daily routine for me. After some time, probably because my body had grown, spontaneous dizziness and anemia became rare. But from time to time, things like uh, trigger dizzy fit, things still trigger dizzy fits and I still lose consciousness. Today, I was lucky that Arahiko caught me. Usually, I wind out passed out on the floor. <sighs> Taking a slow and deep breath, deep breath, I draw fresh air into my lungs. I can feel the blood pooled around the center of my head begin to swirl around again, so I head away from the school. I veer onto the main street. Once I get through here and leave the residential district, it's a direct path to the tunnel mansion. Ah! Crap! Looks like I haven't fully recovered yet. Putting my hand on my forehead, I realize it's hotter than usual. I'm not going to do myself any good by pushing, pushing myself here until I collapse along the side of the road. I guess there's no helping it. Disgusted with myself, I lean on the guardrail. I'll rest for a bit until I manage to calm down. I don't have much to do, so I just stare idly around the street. It's just past noon on a weekday, but the streets is filled with passerbys. Crowds of walking people. Nameless people without personalities walk straight ahead without even casting a glance at the people walking beside them. Even though there's so many people here together in this crowd, in the same space, there's only, uh, they only see one thing. Everyone is their own main character, so they only live the day from that, from their, from that perspective. And so, without really interacting with anyone, they each reach the end of the day by themselves. In a way, you could say it's a very lonely thing. I begin to think melancholy thoughts, perhaps a result of my fever. Guess I'll go home now. I feel calmer, and all I'm doing here is wasting my time with pointless thoughts. Getting up from the guardrail, I resume heading home to the mansion so I can rest up. That is, until I see her. Casually. All I did was casually cast my gaze into the crowd, but my vision freezes. Thump. Golden hair and red eyes. Her clothes are white as if they are a symbol of herself. Thump. My pulse races. My veins and arteries spring into action. My nerves split one after the other. My spinal cord goes berserk, as if it's about to leap out of my back. Thump. The girl walking in the crowd is just beautiful. The distant dizziness comes back to me. My consciousness swims, falling. Thump. 
I, ca I can't breathe. My fingertips tremble. The blood isn't reaching them. My whole body feels cold like I'm freezing to death. Thump. My heart beats in a rush, urging me to hurry up. Ah, ah, ah. I can stand it no longer and unintelligible words escape my mouth. I can't think. My brain tells me only one word. Thump. Just one word repeating in my brain. Her. That girl. I'm going to. <laughs> I feel sick. I can't breathe. It hurts to breathe. For some reason, I can't remember how to breathe properly. My throat is burning. My eyes are about to burst. My palms are soaked. I feel cold, but I'm drenched in sweat. I have to follow her. I have to follow that girl. Chase her, chase after her and talk to her. My frozen feet begin to move. My breathing is ragged like that of a beast. I chase after that girl in white. Is her ass fat? Stop, Zeke. The girl walks slowly. She doesn't realize I'm following her. If I run after her now, I can talk to her. Talk to her and ask her name. Ask her name? Who am I kidding? I know very well that's not what I want to do. I know, but I don't know. It, it looks like I want to do something else, but I can't precisely put what I want to do in words. The inside of my head is misted over like a rain cloud. My throat is hot. I can't breathe. But so what? It's only natural, right? I've just seen that great woman. It would be impolite not to get excited, wouldn't it? Stop her and ask her name? Ha! Give me a break. I'm not a kid after all. I don't fully understand it, but there's only one thing I must do. I walk with my hands in my pockets. My fingertips feel steel. <laughs> How fortunate. The tools are all here. She walks. I leave plenty of room between us. So she won't know. So the other people of Rhonda's won't suspect. She and I are not complete strangers. That's why I have to do my best to make following her look natural. What the fuck is going on? Hold on, what is this nigga about to do? She walks into an apartment building. I don't go in yet, but instead watch from outside. She takes the elevator up. The elevator stops at the sixth floor. I check the common mailbox on the first. Five mailboxes for the sixth floor. I touch one of them and feel a sharp sensation. I smell it. There's no mistake. Her room is the third one on the sixth floor. I enter the elevator and press six. I'm excited. I grip the knife in my pocket tightly while the, in the elevator, while in a small elevator. She's close by. Just a little more and I can... Her... Just thinking about it makes me feel ecstatic. My whole body feels like a sexual organ right before climax. I get off the elevator. The sixth floor corridor is empty. This is good. Quickly, quickly. I want to do it. I arrive in front of room three. I'm about to press the doorbell when I stop. These glasses are in my way. I can't do what I've come to do with them on. It's a promise, Shiki. You should never cut those lines thoughtlessly. Long ago, a woman told me such a thing, but right now, neither her name or her face comes to mind. Slowly, I remove my glasses. I can see the black lines, and not just them. Has something happened in my eyes? Apart from those abominable lines, I can see points like black holes, countless numbers of them. I don't know myself. What am I trying to do? Why am I trying to do this? What does Tono Shiki want to do with that girl? I don't know. Still not knowing, I push the doorbell. Yes? I hear a voice behind the door and the door cracks open. In that instant, I slip through it. The girl says, no, she tries to say. She'll never get to finish what she tried to say because I cut her apart before she could. In that instant, I slip through the door not taking even a second, I draw the knife across the lines running throughout the girl's body, stabbing, slashing, piercing, driving, splitting into pieces. Completely and utterly, I kill her. The black lines that divide her into 17 pieces, through the neck, back of the head, 
from the right eye to the lips, upper right arm, lower right arm, right ring finger, left elbow, left thumb, left middle finger, left breast, from the rib to the heart, from the stomach to the abdomen in two places, left groin, left thigh, left leg, left toe, all of them. As I pass by her, not even taking a second, truly in an instant entirely, I dismantle her into 17 pieces of meat. Huh? I can hear an incredibly dumb sounding voice. It doesn't feel like the voice is coming from my own throat. Dizziness. The minced pieces of the girl lie before my eyes. Red blood all over the wooden floor, like an overturned bucket of water. There's a choking sense of blood. The cuts are very clean, so her insides don't spill out. Only the color of red goes across the ground. Strange. There's nothing in the room. Nothing but the girl's scattered limbs and me standing there dumbfounded. What? A sea of red blood is spreading over the floor. In my hands, I grip my knife, the murder weapon. She's dead. Of course she is. She wouldn't be human if she was alive. Wh why? There's nothing to ask. I just did it with my own hands. With my own hands, I cleanly and instantly cut apart this girl. I don't even know. I killed her. Yes, there's no mistaking it. Or am I mistaken? No reason for me to do such a thing. Why was it a mistake? That's why it's a mistake. It has to be a mistake. But I had no reason from the start. That's why it's a mistake. It has to be a mistake. The red blood flows all over the floor. Slowly, the dark red stain creeps around my feet. Ah! Surprised I lift my shoe, but I'm too late. Like cold tar, her blood makes a thread connecting the pool on the floor to my foot. It's red blood, the color I hate still flowing even now, all because I cut her apart. It wasn't me. Yes, it has to be a mistake. A mistake, a mistake. Probably a mistake, definitely a mistake. This is, 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 this is. What the fuck just happened? This shit just went zero to a hundred, nigga, real quick. No drip. I need a fucking commercial break. Editing Z, cut this shit. Do you like visual novels? Glizzy in hand. And what about RPG on. horror oh games? Oh my freaking goodness. Ah! Ah! Maybe Persona's more your speed. You a penis licker, bro! No matter what genre of game... Bro, nigga! I'm trying to shoot people! You happen to prefer... KILL YOURSELF! There's a Ken Zerk for you. SILENCE, BITCH, NIGGA! Subscribe, and turn on post notifications, and join the Discord. Now back to our regularly scheduled, scheduled program. Ha! Look! Hey, look! Back from the commercial! Look, man! Shiki, you gotta stand on your shit. I'm sorry. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nigga, you did this shit. <laughs> you did this shit. This is un undoubtedly what I did with my own hands. But just what is wrong about it? Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. I killed her. Is that fact wrong? I didn't kill her. Is that fact wrong? No, all oh, that's totally wrong. That's wrong, 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 My goodness. Wrong. No, no, that is wrong. I'm saying it's wrong. It can't be. It just can't be. Wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. I don't know her. She she's just some stranger I saw walking down the street. See? Isn't that strange to you, Shiki? She's a complete stranger. Why would I have to kill her? There's no answer to my screams. Besides, the reason is clear. From the moment I saw her, I could only think of one thing. I, yes, I, Konoshiki, wanted to kill that girl. That's what I wanted to do back then. Just that, it was all so muddy inside my head, I didn't put it into words. Wrong! I feel like throwing up.
The conscience of my stomach rise. Ah! Ah! The crimson is soaking into my eyeballs. Ah! I dash out. I don't think for even a moment about how I might be seen or, or to hide the body. I just want to escape from here. Half crazed, I flee from the unfamiliar apartment. My stomach acid rises in my throat. I throw everything back up. My food, my gastric juices, everything while I cry. What the fuck is this game? What the fuck am I playing right now? What the fuck am I getting into? There's nothing left in my stomach. But my body continues to force me to throw up as if trying to undo what had occurred and return me to my ordinary life. Pain. It hurts. Like my insides are burning. The tears won't stop and my body collapses to the floor like a pile of garbage. Ah! Uh, I keep crying. I killed someone. I killed her without reason, without mercy, like breaking apart a doll. What was it all about? Why I felt like that, why I killed her, even now I can't find a reason. It's a lie. No, it's too odd to be true. The thing that, that just happened might not be real. So this is just one of those dreams I have when I faint. It's a lie. Besides, how can someone cut apart someone else like that with just a knife? I read it in a book once. It takes a whole day of strenuous labor to cut someone up, even when using a saw. That's why there was, there's no way I could have possibly done such a thing with just a knife. Th those, these lines never existed in the first place. Everything was just a delusion I had fallen for. It, it's a lie. Ugh. Gastric juices drips over my lips, passing out of my mouth, dripping down my jaw. Mixed with the juices is something red. My throat is probably bleeding because my stomach keeps trying to throw up, even when there's nothing left in there. It hurts. That's why this, this isn't a dream and I'm just lying to myself. Yes, actually, I understand everything. I lusted after her. Just looking at her aroused me. When I cut her apart, it was so thrilling I almost ejaculated. What the fuck? What the fuck am I reading? Those eyes, too. If I knew these lines could cut things apart like paper being shredded, I should have understood that even a person could easily be cut apart like I just did with to her. I had lived a normal life without even thinking about something like that. If I really am the sort of dangerous person who could easily kill just about anything, then I should have put out these eyes and lived a life without seeing anyone. I'm sorry, Sensei. I'm sorry. Not even such a simple promise. But I don't care about myself. I killed that person. That person's life up until now, the, per the people around that person, the future that person dreamed of, everything destroyed by a stranger. Even if I regret it, I cannot be forgiven. Even if I apologize, I cannot be forgiven. Have I gone insane? I don't know. There isn't even a single trace of that impulse left. But if that impulse came again, what would happen to me? The thought of holding back never crossed my mind. I did not even consider trying to stop myself, kill this girl. If it had seemed like the obvious thing to do when I went through with it, then there's nothing I can do. And the answer is simple. I must be insane. I've probably been mad since eight years ago when I miraculously came back to life from a fatal accident. I'm cold. The sun has gone down without me noticing. What time is it now? I can't tell. My eardrums are filled with noise like static TV. Static. 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 The sound doesn't stop. It's terribly cold. If I stay sitting down on this bench like this, I think I'm gonna die. Static. 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 I don't feel anything. I don't care about that repeating noise of the freezing cold. My body is shivering. It may be due to the cold or the uneasiness or the fear or regret. I can't tell which. I've killed someone and I can't explain why I did it without any reason. What a joke. There is no reason. and There's no way I can explain it. I killed her just because I felt like killing her. Such a reason is insanity. Yeah, it would be so easy if I was just insane. But my heart still remains sane. It's only because I'm still sane that I can feel this numbness. Static, static, static. The knife is still in my hand. Resolving this by killing myself, that's pretty easy, but I can't do it. 
I'm still sane, so I can't do it. My heart fears death. And somewhere in my heart, I know that doing so will not settle this or atone to it. The noise continues. My body temperature continues to plummet. I can't kill myself. But if I leave things as they are, I'll disappear. Maybe that's for the best. Even if a killer like me survives. If I... Just quickly... Die... Like this... Tono? Suddenly my name is called. I raise my head. There's Senpai. It feels like decades since I last saw her. I'm like... in fucking shock. What the fuck is going on? What are you doing sitting out here in the rain? Rain? Ah, I see. That static noise up until now is the sound of the rain. No wonder it's cold. I can see now that I'm completely soaked and freezing. Oh, you don't even have an umbrella. You're gonna catch a cold like that, Tona. Senpai's voice is so painful. It was only a few hours ago that I last heard it, but now it feels so distant. Tona? Can you hear me? Uh, uh, yeah. It wouldn't be so bad to catch a cold. I just reply without thinking. That won't do. You'll catch more than a cold with rain like this, even if it's October. Her sentence cuts off as she touches me. How long have you been like this, Tona? You're so cold. Senpai pulls my arm and forces me up from the bench. I'll lend you my umbrella, so please hurry and go home. And do something about your body. It'll be really it'll really be a matter of life and death if you don't warm up quickly. Uh, uh yeah. But I can't go home. I, I, I can't go anywhere ever again. I can't go home after doing something like that. I don't think there's anywhere left I can rest anymore. Senpai stares at me. I see. Then let's go back to my room. It's closer than your house, so it's perfect. Senpai pulls me by my arm. I can't shake her off. I can't think about anything at this moment. And Senpai's warmth is... is the only certain thing in this world where everything feels numb. Senpai's room is a common one-room apartment in a two-story building. Just one really small, cramped room the size of a six tatami... the size of six tatami mats in one kitchen. As one might expect from Senpai, the room is a neat one. The trivial fact relaxes my numb nerves just a little. Here, please, wipe yourself with this. She hands me a bath towel. Sorry, I don't have any clothes that fit you. Please, just bear with this for a while. I'll go prepare something warm for you to drink right away. Senpai retreats to the kitchen. I'm left by myself in the neat room. Never imagined coming into a girl's room like this. A girl's room. The room of a girl. A girl's room which I forced myself into and killed a girl in. I feel like I'm throwing up. What am I doing here? In such a place? I have absolutely no right to receive Senpai's hospitality here. Thanks for waiting. Here you go- Tono! You've gotta wipe yourself down quickly! Senpai scolds me as she begins to rub my head with the bath towel. See your shirt is all soaked too! You've got to take it off. You might catch pneumonia like this. A very fierce looking senpai undoes, my, undoes the buttons on my shirt. Suddenly your fingers stop. Um, uh... Senpai takes a long hard look at my chest. This is a healed wound, isn't it? Uh, she must be surprised to see the old wound on my chest. The burn like marks are right there in the middle of my chest. She might be surprised at seeing them because she didn't know. Yeah, they're fine. It's already been eight years. I see. Thank goodness. If this wound was the reason you're acting funny, I'd have to take you to the hospital right away. Senpai gives a faint, soft smile. A twinge. When I see her smiling face, my chest hurts. It's alright. I, I can do it by myself, so leave me alone. 
Okay, I'll bring you some tea then. Oh, and if you take your shirt off, please use that sheet over there to warm yourself. I wipe my trousers with the bath towel, but even so, my trousers are still wet. The sheet is going to get soaked if I cover myself with them. I take off my shirt and wrap my top half of the body with the towel. Are you finished wiping yourself? Then let's have some tea. Senpai sits down holding a tea set. Please sit down too, Tono. I can't calm down with you standing up. I do as I'm told and sit down. Senpai pours some English tea and hands it to me. Neither of us say anything. Senpai drinks her English tea as if she doesn't notice my presence. Following Senpai's example, I drink some as well. It's hot. It's so hot that it hurts my tongue. The warmth puts a pulse into me. It feels like my heart, brain, and all my other organs that stopped begin that stopped begin to move a little again. Senpai says nothing. It's not long before that teacup is empty. Senpai naturally refills the cup again with more. Ah, I get the feeling that I have to say something. Tono! I recoil in shock. I'm going out for a bit. Can I count on you to look after the house? Uh, uh yeah. That's fine. Alright, then I'll leave it up to you. I'll be right back so I don't do anything funny. I wonder how serious she is. Smiling as she speaks, Senpai leaves. I'm alone again. The warm something I'd felt up to a moment ago is quickly cooling down. Senpai didn't ask me anything. She takes a person like me into her room and looks after me like it's a natural thing to do. Though I didn't notice. The warmth of the tea, the neatness of the room. What is many, many more times, what is many, many times more comforting than those things is having someone beside me. <laughs> My chest hurts. A little while ago, I preferred to be alone feeling nothing. But now I become uneasy just by your absence. I want to scream like I've gone crazy. What arrogance. I'm a murderer after all. I don't have a right, I don't have any right to Senpai's kindness. But I'm selfishly wanting Senpai to quickly, quickly come home. I'm home, Tono. Thanks for looking after the place. Senpai. It seems Senpai has brought all sorts of things. Several plastic bags hanging from her hands. Let's see, please wear this for now. It's cheap, but it's better than wet clothing. By the way, the bath should be ready about now. You should feel a bit better after relaxing in there for a while. Huh? Senpai neatly prepares everything. My change of clothes, a bath, this person is. Even though there's no need to do so for a person like me. It's, it's okay, Senpai. I'm going home. I can't cause you any more trouble. What are you saying, Tono? You said you can't go home, right? I've already bought food for two, so please take responsibility. Responsibility? Senpai. Please, warm yourself up, eat dinner, and get yourself together before you go home. If you just go home with a face like that, I'll be so worried I won't be able to sleep. My chest hurts. Happiness. I'm so happy I'm about to cry. But on the other hand, I'm in fear of her kindness. Why? Yes? What is it, Tono? Why do you go so far, Senpai? I don't have any right to be treated kindly by you. I killed someone. I can't have someone taking care of me. I'm hopeless. I made a very big mistake just then and I ran away without taking responsibility. I was even considering just dying. I'm trying to cling on to Senpai. That sin. That life I took with my own hands. I'm trying to make it something that didn't happen in my mind. The mistake I made is unforgivable. No. I don't think it should be forgiven. That's why I'm hopeless. I have no right to be treated well by you here, Senpai. Senpai sighs. It seems you're convinced that you're a bad person, Tona. She answers simply. Senpai grasps the truth lying deep within me. But that just shows you have no confidence in your own actions. You know you made a mistake, but you don't understand whether it's good or bad. That's why you have no choice but to drive yourself into a corner until things become clear to you. No, that's... I don't know, but yeah, I am taking it in the fact that I did it, yet I still don't understand why. I killed someone and that makes me a bad person. 
Maybe I've just been forcing myself into the role of the villain as I try to confirm where my sin lies. I don't know what your mistake is, but to put it bluntly, I don't care. You say you have no right to kindness, but that's just your point of view. If I'm not being kind to you for your sake, so please, don't worry about it. Well, I mean I'm doing this because I want to. It has nothing to do with your circumstances. It may be a bother to you, but please, think of, think of yourself as having been caught by a mean-spirited senpai and give up. Saying this, senpai smiles. That soft, protective, faint smile. I can hear the sound of rain. In the end, I couldn't shake off senpai's kindness after all. She lets me use the bath and prepares pajamas for me. She treats me to dinner and she lends me a bed because it's raining outside and I'm about to go to sleep like this. My throat feels blocked. Senpai is taking care of me so much my senses feel numb. During dinner, she spoke cheerfully like she always does. She raised all the usual topics about school, about the many shops in the business district and so on. And although I couldn't give her even one proper answer, every time I responded, I felt a little bit of myself coming back. Right now, I'm sleeping in Senpai's bed and can't stop thinking about Senpai who's sleeping on the floor. What a turn of events. I killed somebody only hours ago and now I'm getting excited like a normal student. My senses really do feel numb. I didn't think I could ever be showered in happiness like this ever again. I can't sleep so I just look around. I don't know what I should do next. I can hear the sound of the downpour outside. You're gonna be late tomorrow if you don't hurry up and sleep, Tono. Senpai, you're awake. Yes, I can't sleep until you do. I am a girl after all. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll sleep in the kitchen then. Oh, how many times do I have to tell you? You've got a cold so you can't sleep in a place like the kitchen. It's all right, so please just hurry up and forget about your unpleasant thoughts so you can go to sleep. Unpleasant thoughts? That's impossible. It's not something I can forget. It's something I shouldn't forget. Whatever the reason, I killed someone. To forget about the person I killed would be a sin deep beyond imagination. No, I can't just gloss over my sins, senpai. I can't forget about them and I won't try to, but thanks. You really helped me with all sorts of things today. I really might have died if I'd stayed like that. That would be running away. If I really think I made a mistake, I shouldn't deny it. Sins, you say? It seems like your mistake is something unimaginable for me. Senpai speaks in a cheerful voice like she's telling a joke. But there's no such thing as a human who doesn't commit sin. It's not like the world is divided into sinners and the innocent. As long as you're alive, you'll make mistakes. It's sad, but it's unavoidable. To live is to be worn down. We're only, we're only beings who influence others while we fade away ourselves. Couldn't have said it better. Couldn't, hey, what did, what did Jesus say? I forget, I think it was in Mark. Was it? It was Mark or John. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and they was talking about, we should stone that woman for being promiscuous. I think it was being promiscuous. Or it has something to do with her husband, I think. I don't remember. But we should stone that woman. And Jesus was like, hey, who among you is free of sin? If you free of sin, you can cast the first stone. Everybody sinners, bro. Come on. Seal, you, you, you spitting. I love you. I love you so much, Seal. I love you. What? And you're saying we're beyond salvation? I don't like that story about how everyone makes mistakes. Yeah, I guess we can't be saved if that were the case. But you can atone for your sins. There are only people who can and who cannot atone for their sins. I think those beyond salvation are those who cannot atone for their sins. For some reason, Senpai's voice sounds very sad. But you can atone for your sins, Tono. I don't know what kind of mistake you've made, but you're the kind of person who can atone for your sins. If you're too worried to sleep, and just think about how you intend to live and atone for your sins from now on. It's a really hard thing to come up with, so your brain is sure to tire out and you'll fall right asleep. I don't know how serious she is and as she seems to be throwing jokes into the mix. I can atone for my sins, huh? 
But Senpai, my mistake is definitely one that can't be atoned for. That's something I can say for sure. <laughs> That's right. No matter what form it takes, sin cannot be atoned for. If you injure someone, the sin is not gonna the sin is not gone even if you heal the wound, is it? No matter how hard you try, you can't erase the mistakes you've made. I think atoning is not about the results, but about the process. That's what makes that's what I mean when I say those who atone for and those who don't. That's why you're the kind of person who can atone for your sins. I don't understand. I'm a terrible person. I'm not the great person you think I am. I can easily see that. I was really moved just then. You have a terrible wound on your chest, right? Y yes, but what about it? You must have had a serious accident to get a scar like that. Scars tend to distort your mind. A wound that size which doesn't disappear is a little out of the ordinary. But you're a very natural person. Anyone with that kind of wound who can lead a normal life can be proud of his own strength. You must have had a very proper childhood. Satisfied, Senpai co concludes her musings and falls asleep. I can hear her breathing if I strain my ears. Are you asleep, Senpai? There's no reply. I can only hear the sound of the rain from outside. A tone for my sins, huh? A punishment to fit the sin I had committed. I guess they'll find the body of the girl I killed tomorrow, and there'll be a new serial killer story on the news. I can't even begin to count the things I'll lose when that happens. I'll be in trouble with for I'll be in trouble. It'll be trouble for Akiha for sure. I'll never be able to talk to Senpai like this again. But if that would atone for my sins, then I would have no choice but to accept it. If I can atone for my sin, that with that, then there might be salvation somewhere. I feel a little sleepier. I don't know about tomorrow. I don't know, but if I can be forgiven until the moment my sin is discovered, until the moment I'm confronted with my sin, I wish I could keep living this kind of life. Swoomp. Nah. There's a noise coming from nearby. I don't feel like waking up at all, but I lazily open my eyes in the reaction to the noise. Senpai is changing. No, nigga, we just killed somebody. Let's not think like this. It's still the middle of the night. There's no light coming from in the window. Maybe the rain stopped. It's very quiet now. Senpai's taking off her clothes. What a shame. If I wasn't in such a deep state of regret over the murder I committed or half asleep, I would be able to fully appreciate how sexy Senpai looks. Right now, though, my head doesn't seem to function properly. Senpai's eyes look lifeless. More importantly, there's something strange. What is that? There's odd bruises on her arms. No, those aren't bruises, more like tattoos. There's something not right about this. I feel sleepy again. I think a lot of things are cluttered around Senpai's feet, but that's it. I fall into a deep sleep. Holy shit. The way it's just like, the way it just turned up so out of nowhere, so out of the blue. Dude, what? So Seo Senpai is some kind of magic motherfucker too. We just fucking killed some random ass girl for God knows why. God knows why. What the fuck? <laughs> That's the end of the episode. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or read them all, tap into the next one. I've got no clue in hell what the fuck is going on, but like, I'm locked in. Um. It's been a while since the last episode, and oh man, I'm kind of glad for that. I feel like if I, I, I feel like it hit a lot harder after being away for a while. But peace out, I love y'all. Let's hop into the next one. Hope y'all are enjoying.